Now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen a Cobra commuting. Here's a look at the Super 7 G.I. Joe Reaction Figures Cobra Escape Pack. It may be April Fool's Day, but Cobra ain't fooling anyone with these cockamamie disguises. Inspired by Cobra's leadership ham-handed attempt to avoid capture at the end of the Pyramid of Darkness miniseries, Super 7 has put together an homage of what might be the best worst escape plan of all time. Featuring Baroness as a nurse, Cobra Commander as an old lady, and Destro as a city worker, the G.I. Joe Reaction Cobra Escape Pack comes with a graffiti-scrawled subway car slipcase-style packaging and includes grocery bag, hammer, and medical, medical bag accessories. Don't be fooled by letting the G.I. Joe Reaction Cobra Escape Pack reach the end of the line without adding it to your collection. I don't know if it's just me, but something seems rather off about that old woman. Before we get a closer look at the Super 7 G.I. Joe Reaction Cobra Escape Pack, I'd like to first thank the folks over at Super 7 that did provide the sample we're about to have a look at. If you guys are interested and would like to grab these for yourself, they are, as of right now, over on their website for $65. Grabbing the old tape measure, just to see how tall the figures stand, Cobra's Destro, you can see, is the tallest of the three, but they're about the same size to one another. So Baroness, for example, Cobra Commander, and Destro, just being a tad bit taller, are still about three and three quarters of an inch tall or the figure is going to be about 9 centimeters in height. As is also the case at the very end of the episode of the Pyramid of Darkness miniseries, which is one of my personal favorites, each of the figures come in clue with the same accessories that they also have in that episode. So, for example, Baroness comes in clue with a little nurse medical bag. The bag doesn't open, but it's nicely molded here in brown plastic. You've got the trim, the part that opens at least, done here in gray. The little latch that holds the handle is done in gold. All in all, just a nice looking bag, and it does fit into her hand. All the accessories that we're going to be going over in the next little while do fit into the figure's hands, and actually they do fit into either hand, so it doesn't have to necessarily be on this side, for example. Uh, Cobra Commander, I really don't know what exactly he's stuffing in his bag. I've seen a lot of messy purses, but this one takes the cake. He very well might have cake in there. It almost looks like he's got a slimy salad slithering its way out the side of the bag. I don't, I don't even know. That looks like it could be possibly a wig. I can only imagine the things I would probably find in there. I probably would find also quite outdated expired coupons. Everybody likes to keep old coupons. I'm guilty of that as well. My wallet's full of things that I know expired years ago. But this does fit again into his hand. Uh, again, either one of these hands is fine. It doesn't have to necessarily be the one. But seeing as I did have Baronesses on this side, I'm going to put Cobra Commanders then on the other. Destro, though, doesn't come with a bag, but he comes with a hammer. A hammer painted on the end of the ha head. It's more of a gunmetal gray, while the rest of the handle, at least, is kind of more of a yellowish beige. And this, would you believe, does fit into his hands. Let's go back to this hand. Uh, the hammer is really the softest of all the accessories, but it still manages to fit well into Destro's hand. Putting the figures back down, let's go back to the beginning here, looking at Baroness. Baroness, as dressed as a nurse here, you can see like every detail gets captured here in a smaller reaction style. What we'll do maybe first is we'll remove the bag, just because I know looking at the articulation it might get things in the way. Even though she doesn't technically have a name printed here on the front tag, all the details are still captured, down to the idea that they even took the time to give her translucent lenses. This could simply have been just a case where they could have painted the lenses in red and Nobody would be really complaining, I guess, about it. But the idea that they actually took glass lenses and put them over top of her existing eyes so you can still see, there's Baroness's eyes underneath the red tinted shades. I think that's a nice touch. Uh, because she does have longer hair, it's going to give a little more limitations when it comes to the articulation of the figure. She does, has, does have her nurse's hat to the top that's pinned in place, I'm sure. And she does have the long dress, the long nurse's outfit. A little bit of blue goes a long way, but mostly it's a well-painted figure. Down below, she's got her tiny little nurse shoes as well. Each of the figures, by the way, do have peggles on the undersides of the feet, but none of the figures come in clue with display stands. It's a standard size diameter peg hole, though, so you could easily then use just the display stand. It comes in clue from other figure lines. For the figure's articulation for Baroness, I've already mentioned the fact that she's going to be a little bit more limited for her hair just because she's got so much of it. The head only rotates back and forth, and that's it. But for reaction figures, you tend to have five points of articulation. So you have head, you have shoulders, and then you have legs. Baroness's arms, based on that, rotate all the way around. And her legs are split the middle here. It allows the legs to at least rotate or hinge back and forth. So again, five points of articulation for the figure. Baroness looks good, though. 
I think Cobra Commander by far is my favorite, so I'm going to keep him for last. Moving then on to Destro. Talking about tiny little details captured here. Again, for figures that are limited in articulation, don't think for a second that they're limited when it comes to detailing. They even took the time to paint his tiny little pupils you can see in green, like he does have in the series. Destro's silver domed face, nicely painted here in silver. The hat is not removable, but it looks like it's may have, may have been used by using softer plastic to get that on his head. Just be careful though when getting this guy out that you don't actually bend the rim of his hat. I actually did do that and I just wanted to, at least it bends back in place. If you have any problems, I'm sure you probably could heat that up in, in hot water, for example. But he is wearing, of course, his jacket. The jacket also below that has himself a tool belt. I can't tell what that actually is, whether those are pens or maybe they're also screwdrivers. Maybe they're both. But he does have the belt there painted nicely here on the side. Again, like for how small these things are, they're really quite well painted. I don't see any real paint problems either, especially the part like right here, for example. I was really impressed to see that they painted this part right here. Because, I mean, really, that's the part that's hidden anyways when the figure's legs are straight. For all intents and purposes, they could have left the paint end right there, continued the paint right here, and left the part in the middle unpainted, but they actually did paint the rest of the belt. It doesn't go all the way across, mind you, but at least they painted more than they really needed to. Again, he does have peg holes in the undersides of his work boots. I hope those are safety-required work shoes. You have to make sure that they're steel toes to the top. But the figure's articulation is going to be exactly the same as Baroness's. The head rotates back and forth. Arms rotate also all the way around. And you can uh, hinge. I don't want to say hinge. You can swivel the legs forward and back. Technically, as well, you can also get them in seated positions. I don't know what plans they have down the road to release vehicles. But if they did, they'd have all the means to sit inside of a vehicle. So there's Destro. By far, though, my favorite already mentioned is the old woman Cobra Commander. And you want to talk about being out of place when it comes to the comes to the disguise. Everybody would know right away, recognize right away that Chrome Dome's face, well, not much of a face, is shown here. Underneath, is that a bonnet? Is that just, I don't know, maybe that's just a, a, uh, a like a bandana? Maybe it's a bandana. I think it's almost more like a bonnet. He does have the wig there underneath that. It's sculpted again really nicely. And again, the paint for how small this is. Because parts like right here would be probably quite problematic, but painted very, very well. Uh, he is wearing a jacket. And again, I can't even imagine where they would have found these clothes. Where they found them in a dumpster somewhere? Or does it just Cobra pack extra clothing for disguises? It's questions I'm sure we're not going to get answers for. What I do think, though, is I feel like Cobra Commander's got the rattier of all the clothing. Not only is he unkept when it comes to the sleeves, like he's got little patches there on the sleeves, for example. There's some tear there that he has on the front of his shirt. And even down below as well, like, I can't imagine how dirty those socks are that he's carrying around on him. But you can see, like, one's draped down, one's got holes there on the other side. He does also have shoes. The shoes have peg holes, once again, on the undersides of his feet. But again, like, nice-looking Cobra Commander. By far my favorite of the three. The head sculpt, again, allows for, well, peg joint, at least, for the top of the head, allows the head to rotate back and forth. So that's all you're really going to be able to get. Swivels, once again, for the uh, the arms. And again, you can swivel the legs back and forth. They've done the same similar thing they did to Baroness. They put a split up the middle of the dress. So while it does look a little flat on the inside of it, at least it gives Cobra Commander not only the means to bend his legs, but also as, as well, if you wanted to have them sitting inside of something, you'd also do that as well. Nice looking set, though. This is a set that I would hope at some point. Now, reaction figures, I think, would be a little bit easier for them from a cost standpoint to be able to produce. So when you get to, like, the more obscure characters, no more obscure than the way that Cobra looks at the end of the Pyramid of Darkness trying to hide from G.I. Joe. I don't know if they'd ever plan to release these in full-scale Ultimates line with full articulation. But the reaction line is sort of their way to kind of get into those tested waters maybe not everyone's going to be down to collecting for example the escape cobra uh, cobra uh, members but i'm glad to see that they actually released them i would love to see of all the three really i would love to see old woman cobra commander get released in a larger scale figure but if that doesn't happen which i'm probably guessing is not going to be the case at least we have them in a smaller three and three quarter inch scale part of their reaction line that super seven continues to do so well and just before we jump over to the rotisserie, I did also want to bring in the packaging that came included with the Cobra Escape Pack because it was something I did want to mention. Not only do we have ourselves the subway car here on the front that has the graffiti of the Cobra logo and you got Cobra and stuff down below here, but when you also remove the top here, by the way, the top of it slides through the opening here on the top of the card. Once you slide that then off, down below you've got yourself nurse, old lady, and city worker, but you're also treated on the back of this to a file card. 
the file card isn't the same size. In fact, I think it's a little bit smaller than the G.I. Joe file cards from the 80s. But the fact that they would take the time to include something like this, you could cut this out for your want if you want and store this along with the rest of your file cards. And while not necessarily listing the individual names of the characters, Destro, Cobra Commander, and Baroness, what they did do at least is they did put Cobra Escape Pack to the top and Pyramid of Darkness down below. There's a read up, of course, if you'd like to pause and read for yourself. But I like the idea, again, that they took the time to have this as be something on the back of the card. Though it would involve you having to, of course, damage the box that the figures are contained inside. If you are one that likes to discard your packaging and just keep these things then loose, definitely encourage the idea of then cutting this out and storing it with the rest of your file cards. If you can't buy the fact that these are regular city folk traveling home after a long day of work, but you can buy into the idea of wanting to get these for your reaction collection, they are, as of right now, available over on Super 7's site for $65. For $65, you're getting three figures, five points of articulation for each, and you're getting as well the designated accessory that each of the characters carry in the episode of The Pyramid of the Darkness. I really like the look of this line. Part of me would love to get this version of Cobra Commander scaled up to go along with the Cobra Commander we already have from the G.I. Joe's Ultimates, but I know the chances of that are probably slim to none. We can at least, though, live vicariously through the ones that we're getting here from the reaction figure line. Big, big thank you. Big thank you to the folks over at Super 7 that did provide this sample of the reaction, G.I. Joe reaction, Cobra Escape set that we had the chance to have a look in this review. For a video question, if you don't mind me throwing it out to the wind and you can catch it with your butterfly net if you'd like, What's your favorite G.I. Joe miniseries? Of the ones available, at least. There's Pyramid of Darkness, Weather Dominator, The Mass Device. I always was a big fan of The Mass Device. But what's your favorite G.I. Joe miniseries? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, as well, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to hit with a like, but you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, and you're wanting to stick around for more Super 7 reviews, if you haven't already done so, I mean, it makes no sense if you've already subscribed. You can't really very well subscribe again. But if you are the new time comer, you've just arrived onto the site. Maybe this review was the thing that brought you to the yard and you'd like to stick around for more. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification so you're going to get reminders every single time the person behind the camera is putting new content onto his channel. And speaking of content coming your way, there's definitely going to be a lot more coming away. So always keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time.